Dr. Beth Harris and Stephen Zucker began their video conversation by commenting on Bernini's strong religious sentiments and his love for theater, two things to see expressed in the work he did in the Cornaro Chapel, Ar architecture and sculptures of St. Teresa. Now this is all very true and interesting, but it's not the full picture. We have to be careful not to interpret the artwork only or simply as the self-expression of an individual. Art didn't work that way in the 17th century. We will, in this class, watch the development of an idea of an independent artist expressing a personal vision. But it's, and it's starting to be seen a little bit, hints of it in someone like Bernini, but it is not fully developed until the really the mid to late 18th century, excuse me, mid to late 19th century is what I meant to say. So in general, the important thing to understand is that artists like Bernini in the 17th century were very conscious of working, the fact that they worked on commission for a patron. And it was their job to design an artwork that expressed and satisfied the patron's needs and wants. Here is the patron of the Coronaro Chapel, where Bernini constructed his marble Saint Teresa in ecstasy. As a cardinal, the patron is a man of high stature and elite authority within the church power structure. Bernini's vision is designed to appeal to Cardinal Coronaro's sense of himself as a high official in the Catholic Church and a defender of the faith. It is designed to express his values, his religiosity, not only Bernini's. And so the patron represents the institution of the church. And in this way, to fully understand Bernini's sculpture in the Cardinal's Chapel, we have to think about the position of the Catholic Church in the 17th century. Its way of using art to bolster its authority as it is in the midst of crisis. Because Bernini is very conscious of the church itself as being the, the, the very source he is referring to, or the very most meaningful ground beneath the St. Teresa sculpture. In the 17th century, the Catholic Church was facing a major crisis with massive cultural implications. It began in 1517 when Martin Luther, shown here in this portrait by the painter Lucas Cranach, Martin Luther changed the course of religious history and culture in Europe. He started out as a priest in the Catholic Church but famously challenged the authority of that church by developing 95 theses, statements, accusing the popes and the church of essentially corruption, pointing out things like the sale of indulgences where people can pay to be sort of excused for their sins. This was a religious earthquake for Europe. Understand that the Catholic Church had been the sole institutional voice of Christianity in Western Europe since the 500s, a thousand years. It had had a monopoly on religious life for a thousand years. That broke apart in the 1500s, and it led to massive cultural implications, sectarian strife, violence, as well as the development of new schools of Christianity, which rejected the papacy and established different forms of thought and new styles of worship. In this atmosphere, the Catholic Church mounted a campaign to restore faith in its righteousness and to defend itself from critics reasserting control. Challenging the Reformation, the popes decided to launch what is called a counter-reformation. And here is an important figure in that counter-reformation, Pope Paul III. He assembled a Council of Trent, which was supposed to respond to this challenge 
by defining Catholic dogma, creating reforms, and having more training of the priests. At the same time, he also started the Inquisition, because one of the ways the popes would respond was to have a papal office that was seeking out heretics for interrogation, for trial, and for sentencing. So this artist, Veronese, was actually hauled before the Inquisition for this painting because it was felt to be insufficiently respectful, to have not the proper decorum for a portrait where Jesus is having the Last Supper, and you've got a dwarf, a jester, and you've got a kind of a monkey, a little baboon sitting here. It was felt that these curiosities were distracting from the holy message. And the artist Veronese, he essentially found a way to wiggle out of this by changing the name and saying, no, really, it's not supposed to be a Last, last Supper. It's actually a different subject. It's a feast in the house of Levi. The point is we can see that art is very important in the Counter-Reformation. It is important in that the Protestants are saying that the, one of the ways the Catholic Church is corrupt is it has too much art. If the art is distracting, you should be reading your Bible and not looking at beautiful paintings. They spend too much money on it. And then on the other hand, the Catholic Church is going to double down on the art and it's going to use the art to really try to draw in and connect the worshiper in a stronger, more, more emotional way to really kind of fortify the connection between the Catholic Church and the Catholics who worship in that religious tradition.